And you have seen this, thanks to town, you have seen some of these the slides before. But you, you, want, you will need now, you will have to see them again. But th there are several important patterns that, that we can detect. And it's something that is very easily done for, for any of the countries that, that you are working on and you are living on to survey how the, the rate of publications is increasing on time and, uh, or, 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 the, or it is not. Here we have the, not, the total number of publications generated by year. So, of, of course, it's, it's an, an ascending trend. But also we have, we, we can obtain data relevant for the knowledge of biodiversity. For example, this is the number of publications in which species for Mexico are described by the year. And here is the cumulative curve saying what is the, what's the rate of, of the appearance of new species in the, in the literature. And, and what you can see is that we have also several peaks in which the species of birds of Mexico have been described. See, the Sistema Nature, see the work of Meli. This is Mosinho. If, if, Mosinho, if Mosinho's work was to be published, it, it's going to be like here. It's, and of course, the description, the number of this new descriptions of species have been decreasing a long time. And the curve is flattening, indicating that we have most of the species of Mexican birds already described. This is another another slide that you have seen before, that is, what's the importance of the contribution of the locals into the bibliography of Mexican bird diversity? And it is a very, very important pattern that is reflecting what I just told you about how the, the exploration of the birds of Mexico have been performed. As you see, we, I divided this this set of the, the, all the references in two categories. One that is no Mex, that means that not a single Mexican or, Mex or resident of Mexico is involved in the publication. And Mex, if in the publication is done by any Mexican researcher or Mexican-based foreign researcher. And this is, a, this, is a, this is the trend. What you can see is for years and years, the, the, the largest number of, the, of publications was produced by the foreign researchers until the very last years, starting in the 70s, the, the late seven, 1970s and early 1980s, in which the, the, most, the, the highest number of publications is, produces, is produced by Mexican researchers. What is good? This is the last 52 years. Why? Because I wanted the last 52 years. And it is, it is very important that this pattern reflects what the scientific world in these days is needing. We, we are in need of having the information we are producing published and available to everybody. So when, when the research groups in Mexico started to be more mature, the publications increased a lot. So this is the ugliest ornithologist in Mexico, so I'll change. You, you, you'll see this is the percentage, so the, the big percentage of the publications in the recent years has been done by Mexicans. And this is the overall picture from 1825, that is the first reference that I have in the, in the database until 2012. The overall pattern is 72% of the publications has been done solely by foreigners. And only 28% of the publications involve local science in ornithology. Does it sound familiar for you? Sadly. However, this is the picture for the, for the 21st century. In this case, 68% uh, 
of the publications are produced by Mexicans, 32%, by solely foreign, foreign researchers. This is a picture that changes. See, it, it, it is reflecting the maturation of the research groups locally. That is why here we have sad Mexicans and happy gringos and Australians. Here we have happy, my, my God, my, my. <laughs> happy Mexicans and sad gringos. Another important question is, what kind of information is being published that is relevant for biodiversity? And what's the main trend of the science that involves the study of birds in Mexico? And also, this pattern is reflecting what happens in any tropical country. This is the total number of papers published by subject. And this is a set of categories that, are, that we added. See, in biogeography that involves the study of distribution of birds, systematics, ecology, faunistics, conservation, ta 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 ta, ta and, and other themes. What we see is that most publications are produced in the realm of biodiversity. Those publications are relevant to biodiversity. In this graph, what, what we see is how the subjects, the number of papers published by sub, the general subject have been changed a long time, only to see if there are some areas of research that are, that are on fashion, or some are out of fashion in some areas. For example, in conservation, it's, a, it's, a, it's very messy, right? You, do, you don't see anything. Well, you're checking your Facebook so that you don't care. <laughs> so, but here is conservation, a uh, real increase. Here we have systematics, an increase, the, the gray line. But also I, I was asking, are we able to detect also the, the trend of having local versus foreign science in the publications according to the, to the type of research? And the answer is yes, this is the, the overall pattern. What we see again, we have no, no, no MEX in, re, in red, MEX in blue. And what do we see? Look. So the, the, Mexi the Mexicans uh, produce more just in certain areas of the, of the science than the others. Why? Look, it's conservation, ecology, and faunistics, more or less. Please notice that this are areas of research that include the field, field work. So this is a very, a very important area in which local science is contributing a lot because for us, the field is our backyard. For the foreign, the, the field is traveling and coming to Cape Town to give a course and et cetera, et cetera. This is in the 20th, 21st century. And look again, again the pattern is really, really clear. We are contributing more in terms of faunistics, like in getting distributional point data from birds in the field. It's, it's, it's good, our contribution in ecology, that the study of communities uh, in the field. Oh, gee, 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 gee. We're going to be in conservation because obviously it's a main interest. And we are still a little behind in things like in evolution and systematics. All of these areas of science require complexities of technology, requires a lot of money to be performed. Just because I had nothing to do, I said, okay, what's it? The, the most important tax I mentioned 
in the, in the database. Because most of the contributions are in the realms of ecology, conservation, faunistics, most, uh, most of the papers deal with funnel list overall. Humming, hummingbirds are preferred, ducks, sparrows, ta -ta -ta, and the species more mentioned is Falco peregrinus. What does this indicate? I don't know. Sexy species, exactly, sexy species, species for which there is money to study, species that are, that are of interest for the gringos, for example, the peregrine falcon. We have a lot of a lot of publications on the peregrine falcon because this species has been in the endangered species list of the United States for years and years. So they invested a lot of money on that. This is also a thing to, uh, to think about. Where are we publishing the research relevant to any country? For me, this is really sad because it explains how for years and years the tropical scientists, the, the, the scientists from the trop resident in the tropical countries have been unable to get to the information they need in, in a very easy manner. Most of the publications are published in journals that are outside Mexico and in English. I, I have nothing to, against English, but I wish to wake up one day in a world in which I, have to, I can speak here in Spanish and the gringos has to publish in Spanish and it's, it's very difficult. It, you, you that speak English are, in, are comfortable. But for us that have no, have no English as our first language, always is, 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 we have to change, we have to publish into English, so it becomes dif difficult. I am not complaining, it's just a pattern. <laughs> the, the journals with a with a, with a, uh, esto? Es, uh, este, la flecha, arrow, with an, uh, an arrow, an arrow, are Mexican journals. One, two, three, four, five, six are deceased. Deceased or deceased? Deceased, deceased, deceased. Well, no, they had a disease and now they are dead, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the disease was that there was not enough money to maintain uh, a publication. So the, the panorama is becoming sadder and sadder. Look, but, but this is the, 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 the 21st century. We have again, with, with an arrow, the Mexican journals. And of course, this is improving. So what, what we are seeing here is that we, we are getting into the world of, of science, of publishing science, a, a, li, a little late, but with strength. Is there a pattern of where are we de de developing most of the research? Also because I have nothing to do, I search which region of Mexico was, was the most explored. Of course, the Me the Mexico as a country, uh, as, as the area of, uh, the study area of the papers is predominant. But we have also, uh, the, the total number of publications and the, to the number of publications during the 20th century until 2012. And what you see is that there are, as usual, in all the countries that we live in, certain patterns of interest on the research on biodiversity, in this case of birds. We have Sonora, Baja California, the northernmost states as the most studied 
regions in Mexico. Why? Because of the closeness to the university, the gringo universities. Well, this is a general survey of, of the collection of the publication. Now I want to to point out that when you browse at the at the collections at the publications that were produced, many of those have produced biological collections. So <coughs> a great a great amount of the information of the basic information that is depicted in the publications is, uh, ca could be found in form of biological collections. The biological collections, you've heard that all, all, all the week, they contain biological material that has been accumulated through several centuries. The specimens that are in the biological collections, they provide information that is verifiable about many aspects of the taxa tax reference, identification, age, sex, geography, and other information. And these are the, this, this is the primary information that we have for the studies of systematics, biogeography, conservation, and biodiversity.